The panel will be moderated by Soraya uh, Obey. Soraya uh, is director of the Division of Arab States and Europe at the United Nations uh, Population Fund, UNFPA. But Soraya is much, much more than that. Uh, she is a, a, an activist, a, a thinker, a writer, and also she comes from a background which I personally cherish, and that is literature. And uh, so uh, in her conversation, she uses uh, a lot of that storytelling and literary uh, uh, background that is so effective. So uh, Soraya is going to be moderating this uh, panel of uh, extraordinary women, and uh, I hope that we'll have plenty of time for uh, interaction and, and for questions and comments uh, from the audience. Uh, so Soraya, please take over. Thank you. Thank you, Magna. Uh, I'm very pleased to be with all of you today. I'm sorry I missed the morning session. It would have been more eloquent for me if I had been here in the morning. Uh, however, uh, I'm happy to be with you for this session. Uh, and I think that this session is fairly critical because it talks about civil society. And we all agree that civil society is the heart of development in the heart of society. And for women, uh, participation in civil society is really also a critical aspect of any movement. I will not take further because I believe we want to hear from speakers uh, who will speak in 10 to 15 minutes. And then after that, we will open for question and answer and so on. Uh, hopefully, that we also can have this time. And uh, I will begin by Asma. Tahira Kamal. I will not introduce them because. I will send also the information about uh, them in, in the book uh, brochure. Uh, however, the Hira is important uh, first because uh, she has been a leader in the women's movement in, in Palestine for many, many years. And in Palestine, the civil society was very important to keep the families going uh, throughout the years. So uh, without much ado, I will uh, pass the chair. The topic and aim of the workshop is clear and it goes without saying women have become an important issue of global concern and need to be indeed architects in the new uh, century. In fact, women are getting more and more attention in today's society. Recently, planners have recognized the importance of women in the development process and all agree that their participation is vital in order to achieve sustainability. Neither to say women need to be strong and convincing if they want to play their role more effective so far Four World Conference on Women were held to discuss and figure out how women can step in the, in the limelight and be more effective involved in decision making and participation. We all know that in today's women all over the world still face a lot of constraints and obstacles which impede their global development. The Beijing Platform of Action defined 12 areas of concern and relates at the same time, action to be taken by governments, NGOs, and international organizations. The civil society is the main player in the establishment of the modern and development society. This society can be described as a state of institution and law, in which right of equality, participation, and freedom of speech are guaranteed. Democracy is an important factor for civil society as it, it implies the right to participation in decision making, taking people's needs and interests into consideration and improving their living conditions whenever and wherever needed. The key question is the importance of human participation in this process. Do they have an added value in this? Do women leaders differ from male leaders my experience says yes, they do differ, and I learned more from experiences than from books. Let me share with you a personal 
No. I once facilitated a workshop on leadership where the participants were women from rural areas. I asked them what leadership, uh, what makes somebody a good leader. There were a lot of different answers. Having good communication skills, being proactive, having the ability of, uh, to mobilize a community, having creative ideas, taking a lot of initiatives, and being able to take the right decision on the right time. All normal and logical answers, which you can find back in whatever publication on management. But I wasn't satisfied and felt something was missing. So I asked them again, what, in their opinion, makes a woman a good leader? Their reaction was overwhelming. And many points came up. Points which, so far, I haven't found it yet in publications because they reflected the ideas of women at grassroots level. Let me share it with you. Concern about others. This is one of the answers. Leader much co must concern about the others, but in turn, others also should care about them. It is my personal opinion that we are in real need of such leaders. Most of today's leaders put themselves in the spotlight. Uh, they, they want to be all the time on the middle of the spot. Women, by nature, if I may say, are caretakers and take care of others without expecting something in return. What is lacking now is that we need a leader that concerns of others. Modesty and courage. Indeed, a good, good leader is somebody who has the courage to learn from others, but to teach them as well. Nobody knows everything, but each one has different experiences, and sharing them with others will enrich all. Women learn to grow, uh, learn through their lives, how to exchange experiences with others. It is important to grow with others and to grow with them. Young state of mind. It helps to look ahead and not being afraid of the future or of the uh, prospect becoming older. Women generally do not feel that they are getting older. They continuously think that they are young and they wait the future with promising perspective. Feelings. Women, and I think we all agree on this, are not ashamed to show emotions and listen to heart. This implies that relations and decisions are human. Decisions with an emotional uh, rationale are often easier accepted and implemented because they have an intention to make dreams come true. Love and beauty. Women treasure value like love and beauty. Love gives strength and readiness to give, while beauty makes you more uh, think about the quality of life, not just the life. Readiness to listen. Listening is a very important tool for knowing about others and what is going on. It helps assessing and defining needs of people. Openness. It is a very important asset for each leader. It helps in exchanging experiences and learning from others. Women, again, allow me to say, by nature, are curious and are anxious to know and to learn new things, which could change and or improve their lives. Is there anything else worthwhile mentioning? Yes. My own experience teaches me how important and useful it is to learn from personal painful experiences and to have true friends and family with whom one can share oneness feeling, joy and disappointment. By sharing my feeling with others, I got a lot of support. You know, I I learned that I'm not the only one who from time to time has bad luck. 
everybody at one or stage or another in their life face crisis, problems or whatever. This helped overcome by my bad feelings and strengthened me to continue my struggle. Furthermore, I learned that I can make or enforce changes on my own, but that I need the help and the participation of many others to join me. United, we stand last, but not least, it is important to have confidence in each other. A second issue I want to raise is the constraints that Muslim women leaders are facing. I think there is no doubt about it. The main constraint is the tradition which values the Muslim woman as second-class citizen. Laws, mainly the family law, are discriminating women in Muslim society. The family law is influenced by religion. With the family men, uh, within the family, men have authority to control women. Women do not have the same as men in their testimony, is not fully recognized even when they are witnessing, uh, witness of the event. Fathers are the first in line of custody of the children. Women are responsible to their fathers and husbands. This attitude is also reflected in labor laws. Employment is not considered as a right for women. Employed women are considered housewives. Unemployed women are considered housewives. The father is working, mother is cleaning and cooking. Stereotype is, uh, uh, stereotypes are dominating in the Muslim society and start already in school books of the lowest grades. Also the media to blame. It enforces these stereotypes in popular scope. Uh, this only to convince you of the important role we have to play in order to make a change. And that's exactly what the Palestinian women are trying to do. Analyzing the current laws and draft from the gender perspective and raising awareness amongst women about their rights. Recently, we have a national campaign for, human, uh, for modern and non-discriminating family law. The campaign is supported by various human rights organizations and women groups. The aim is to set up a network between women in the Arab world and Muslim countries and learning from each other through exchanging experiences. In Palestine, a lot of advocacy groups have been set up. We have a Women Affairs Technical Committee, which has a lot of activities in coordination with women grassroots organizations. Thank you for